Out of all the games I've played so far, only three have in my opinion captured the essence of hopelessness perfectly. Project Zomboid. This game really manages to capture what a zombie apocalypse would really feel like. You can die extremely easily from realistic means and there is no cure for the zombie virus. One bite means death. Halo Reach. Halo Reach starts out like the usual Halo game, cool Spartans killing grunts and elites, destroying ships and trying to halt the Covenant invasion. But then, about halfway through the game you realize that the planet Reach is truly doomed. There is no way to save it and this just ends with the last mission where you, Noble Six, are killed while making your last stand. The text just before the mission reading, there'll be another time. God damn, this ending still makes me tear up. And finally, Kenshi. Since Kenshi is definitely a lot less known than Halo Reach and arguably less known than Project Zomboid, I feel like I have to give an introduction. Kenshi is a brutal squad based RPG where you roam the world known as Kenshi with your squad of mentally deranged people or as a lone wolf. Kenshi is a tidally locked moon of an unknown planet that can be seen when you look up at the sky during the game. But the thing Kenshi is most well known for is the amount of detail that has been put into the game, which shouldn't be strange at all, because the game took about 12 years to create. Every biome has different resource abundances, different season and weather cycles, different soil types, and some biomes contain unique creatures while some don't. The game also has a mechanic known as world states. If you defeat the leader of one of the main factions, another person will take his or her place. But since you have stunted their growth by killing their leader, another faction can take over some of their cities. Just as an example, if you kidnap the leader of a faction known as the Shek Kingdom and take their leader to another faction, the Holy Nation, to be imprisoned, a group known as the Kamikaze will appear in the world of Kenshi. This group comprised of Shek will go on a suicide mission against the Holy Nation. This is the game of Kenshi, but why do I think this game captures hopelessness perfectly? Well, there is one detail that I haven't mentioned. Kenshi's world isn't this fantastic world, it is a barren world where factions barely manage to survive, having been nearly destroyed by multiple apocalypses. See, a long time ago, thousands of years ago actually, the world of Kenshi was ruled by a technologically advanced civilization. Kenshi was lush, full of greenery, flora and fauna. But it would not last, and multiple calamities and rebellions caused the civilization known as the First Empire to crumble. Then, a lot of time later, the Second Empire was established. However, this empire, ruled by a skeleton, so a robot known as Catlon, would also eventually fall. These events lead to the state of the world of Kenshi we see when playing the game. Multiple factions just fighting over land and each barely managing to survive. A world where slavery and zealotry has run rampant for over a thousand years. One faction is incredibly religious, sexist and racist, another faction is built on slave labor, and the last major faction is made up of brutes, and they're racist. Now, if hopelessness only existed in the lore of Kenshi, it wouldn't even compare to games like Project Zomboid, right? Well, thankfully its gameplay is just as depressing. Yay. And it all starts with... The main menu. Yep, you heard me right. This screen. The main menu seems boring, but there's one little detail you might miss if you just click load game quickly, and that is the soundtrack. This soundtrack is simply called Kenshi, and many people view it as the main theme of the game. To see why I call this soundtrack hopeless though, you have to wait exactly 3 minutes and 3 seconds. Up until the 3 minutes mark, the soundtrack really isn't all that impactful, it just sounds like what you would expect a western themed soundtrack to sound like. However, when it hits the 3 minute and 3 second mark, the soundtrack begins playing without stopping, and it builds up to this. Now, myself and many people on the internet love this soundtrack because it embodies the main themes of the game while also just being a good piece of music. The build up to the crescendo is perfect and when it hits, it also carries a sense of hopelessness. It is the most intense part of the song but it feels somber and it lasts for such a short time. The intense part of the song lasting for such a short time reflects the gameplay of Kenshi. You might feel strong for some time but eventually, and usually pretty quickly, you will find an enemy that will defeat you or just fall exactly like the first and second empire of Kenshi. I may be reading too much into this, but seeing the level of detail that is in Kenshi, I don't doubt that this is intentional. Getting to the gameplay of Kenshi. If you know one thing about Kenshi, it is probably that it's brutal and it's hard. 
like really hard if it's your first time playing. The world of Kenshi is filled with many beings who want to instantly kill you. Bandits, skeletons who have gone mad, wolves, weird looking beak things, colossal sized animals and much more. It really feels like you're going up against the impossible in Kenshi, a desperate struggle against much greater foes. Yet, you can only move on by struggling in the face of hopelessness because if you fail and yield to despair, you die. Death in Kenshi is very different from other games. Instead of getting a game over screen or just a screen saying something along the lines of you're dead, if your last available character dies meaning that you don't have any characters at base or something, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. The world continues on as normal, just like in real life. You're just a small part of the large world of Kenshi. You're not some hero or the chosen one. You are just a person like everyone else. This makes your struggle against people like the emperors and kings of these major factions even more hopeless. Speaking of major factions, does this look like the capital of a strong kingdom? Does this look like the capital of one of the strongest empires in Kenshi? The answer is no, none of them do. These aren't glorious empires, instead they are just civilizations trying to get by, by doing whatever means necessary. Whether it's slave labor or just plain brutality. Actually visiting all the locations and faction headquarters of Kenshi really makes you feel like there is no hope left for the world. Even some of the better factions, and I use the word better very lightly, like the anti-slavers, are suffering because they are too busy trying to wipe out one of the empires instead of growing enough food to feed the people. Actually, I don't think it would be inaccurate to say that every empire is delusional in some way. The Holy Nation believes that darkness resides in a woman's and every non-human species' body. The United Cities are led by nobles that are incredibly out of touch with reality. Their society is built on slavery and taxing the weak. The anti-slavers, while having a good cause, will not be able to solve the problem completely. They have a lot of issues that would prevent them from having a good future. The Shek Kingdom is led by the Shek, a race known for being nothing much besides brutes. They only rely on strength and not intelligence or any other traits that make up a successful civilization. With the whole world against you and each other, what hope is left in the world of Kenshi? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate if you could subscribe. Goodbye.